Uh, currently, Miles Sanders is the DLF ADP of RB5. So that's just with the RB. So he's the running back five. Um, 11th overall pick out of rookies on DLF currently. At the M Bauer 85. Got a nice article on the website about Miles Sanders and how he's not Saquon right. Barkley. Right. Um, so Very make sure correlated you to this talk. Yeah. Right. Make sure you check that out. Um, and then we just did a mock draft. Me, Matt, Jason, Big Co, the Dynasty Dummies, Riley Burmeister. Um, the artist formerly known as the NFL Draft Talker. Jake, Jake Anderson. Anderson. Jake Anderson. Did he change uh, his Twitter handle? Yeah, no, he d- yeah, he did change it. I think he's like Jake Anderson FF or something mm-hmm. like that. I believe uh, J Mike was in there as well, J too. J Mike. Um, uh, J Wack was in there. J Wack. Uh, the Dynasty Jared Outhouse Wack, really. from the um, Trade Addicts podcast. Yeah. And, who, who do we miss? We missed somebody. Um, J Wack had a buddy, right? The guy who uh, no, uh, was J Mike's buddy. He was, yeah, Mike. he's from, he's a DHH guy. Um, Michael? I can't remember what his name is. While you, while you effort, I'll I'll read off the rest. So in that mock draft, um, Miles Sanders was the third running back off the board. Woo. So this is a rookie running back. Rookie running back off the board. Sorry, we did a startup um, and there was rookies involved. So this is a mock draft with a bunch of so-called dynasty guys that are Corey Cutzer. Corey Cutzer. Um, so a DHH guy. So be sure to check all those guys out. But so this is a mock draft with a bunch of these kind of guys who were into the dynasty and have their hand on the pulse of what's going on. So he's a third rookie running back off the board, uh, seventh round pick, uh, sixth pick. And I think it was by your boy, Jake Anderson. Um, and before him, it was Metcalf, Montgomery, AJ Brown, Harry Jacobs, and then Sanders. Harry. So a little different than the DLF ADP. Yeah, no, I think, th- I think that's definitely more where he's at. Um, I've talked to some guys in the community who have him as their RB1. Um, I won't mention any names here, but they have him as their RB1. So, and, and I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about a guy who's on a major podcast who has him as his RB1. So, I mean, I, I get it to a point. I'm taking Montgomery or Jacobs over him 100% of the time if we yeah, want to talk about that. But for sure. Um, so where do you where do you have them? If that's that was kind of the the general consensus of these guys, third running back off the board. I don't hate that, um, but I, I'm probably just a little lower than 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 that on him. Where do you, uh, Matt? Where do you have him? I have him between Jacobs and Montgomery. All right, so you're probably RB two. Yes, RB two, or for Jay Wayne's liking, RB one B. RB one B. RB one B. Who's your RB one C? Is that that's Montgomery? Yeah, that'd be correct. But he's three. So you got you're going Jacobs first. Jacobs first because I love his playing style. If you go back and watch the 2016 Kentucky game that Jacobs had, it's the by far the best game I've watched of any running back of any in of, he's of a any true of these, freshman in that game. Exactly, right? yeah. he sure is, and he looks great in that game. Um, Jacobs was hurt by a hamstring injury in 2017, and Saban didn't realize what he had in him until late in 2018. So nobody knew about him. And I mean, Before when you have three of the better yeah. backs, and we have a whole thing on Josh yeah. Jacobs. Check it yeah. out on YouTube or uh, or download the podcast. We have dynasty dot com. You can search um, for that player. So Jay Wayne, I think you're probably the lowest on Miles Sanders. Where where do you have him placed in just out of running backs? I I definitely can't put him. I, like, there's definitely four guys I'm taking before him, and then. So that that'd be Jacobs, Montgomery. I'm gonna go with Damian Harris and Rodney Anderson. Like I, I realize you don't have to take Rodney Anderson probably before you you take right. Sanders. But if you ask me which one of those two guys I want, I'm gonna go ahead and take a gamble on Rodney Anderson. I guess. I mean, I could maybe bump him down just because I know I don't have to take him there. But that's like the predicament with rankings. Like, wh- right? How do you factor that in? Uh, and then. I, I think I'll take Travion over Miles Sanders. Old Matt's shaking his head Matt here. doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. He might be turning red. Matt's upset. He has a Christian <laughs> Hackenberg jersey on. That's why I've been calling him Christian Hackenberg, <laughs> just to clear that up. Um, so so you're, you're saying like Sanders. So is, I could go five or six. I mean, I, if, if you wanted, if, if for Matt's pleasure, I could go up to five, but I think I want to take Travion. Well, I mean, we... We share a lot of thoughts. We talk a lot. So I'm I'm pretty much in the same boat with Jay Wayne. I, I don't even want to make eye contact with Matt right now. Um, 
<laughs> I got I got Montgomery, Jacobs, Anderson, and Harris, and then I kind of have a little bit of a space there. And it's it's no slight on Miles Sanders. Um, I I personally like Harris as being a little bit more ready to roll in the pros. I think if we've talked about it multiple times, I think if Anderson wasn't injured. Um, I think he could be the RB one in this class, and I agree. I agree with you. You don't have to take him up there. You don't have to take him before Sanders. So if you're on the board and you like Anderson, you can either trade back or try to take Miles Sanders and trade down. You know, trade with the guy who could be in a range of Anderson and kind of make a little money on that deal. Um, and then I do like Travion a lot in the 200 uh, class of of running backs. But, Five eight two zero oh, six, and I and I'm I'm at a little conundrum with Weber and and Travion and Sanders, and I, I you know I'll I'll mention our boy Benny Snell here a little bit. I mean, if you ask Woof. me, I'll take Benny Snell, but I know you don't have to take Benny Snell. But there's no chance I'm not let I'm let I'm letting Benny Snell not be on my team. Right, like Benny Snell is riding with me. Right, and but it, in the third round. Well, but I mean, if if I have like a late third pick and I'm in the second round and I don't know if I can get Benny on my next pick or not. I'll reach. Let All me right. get Benny. This isn't a Benny Fuck conversation. It. Yes, it is. But I, so I did it. Hold on, real ahead, quick, real ahead. quick. I uh, <laughs> ha. It's a We're, good one. That yeah, last no, yeah, a good except, one. except there's a Benny and the Jets. There's no Jets there. <laughs> no, no, um, I, cut the, I cut out the Jets. Well, you not hear the, the Jets. jets I did a <laughs> I did a rookie mock draft last night, and Benny Snell went at uh, four oh three. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. I'm still not gambling with that late third. I at four oh three, I'm buying Benny Snell. Right. <laughs> I don't want to get into too much of a <laughs> Benny Snell conversation here while we're talking about Sanders. Um, but I, I that's the part of the allure of him is that you he's so cheap and I, I want him everywhere I can get him in that situation. But yes, back to Sanders. The Damian Harris thing I see because Harris is definitely more refined than Sanders is. I totally I see where you're coming from there. He can he's more refined in his game. He does everything. He does everything well, but my issue with Harris is that he just doesn't do anything great. I agree. I agreed. I I think he's I think the floor is higher on Harris than it is on Sanders. I, I think he's just pretty strong across the board. It's yep. nothing like excellent I mean, anywhere. I mean, Oh, the floor is higher on the floor is higher on Harrison is on Sanders. I agree with that. Uh, it's not much, but there's definitely a higher floor. With that Harris. was basically how I started my Harris talk was where I didn't think he was like necessarily awesome at anything, but I thought he was really good at a lot of things across the board. I think, yeah. he's, I think he's fashion that four, five, seven, and he gets better every time I look at him. He's Mark Ingram. It's what he's he like is. A he's fine wine. He's and Mark if, Ingram. If I'll take case, fucking Mark Ingram. I'm in. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but I get, I get the Sanders thing. Do you think... I know you personally probably would, but do you think everybody else in the dynasty community would have him where he is if he wouldn't, if this A wasn't a poorly tested class athletically, and B, if he wouldn't have tested so well at the combine? No, no. I think, I think if he would have ran four five five, I think he's sitting there at RB five. I think for most if, everybody. Yeah, if if he runs in the mid four fives, but still has the same burst yes because because people don't look at that they look at the 40 time and that's oh he ran 449 449 looks better than 451 it's just like when you see 299 versus three dollars the 299 looks better than three dollars right oh, for i mean but i know it's three dollars <laughs> yes <laughs> but it looks around. better yeah, but it looks better subliminally idiots yeah it looks better look i i can understand the the i think there is a, a like you were kind of saying with um Harris how the floor might be a little higher like there's definitely like he he improved his stock at the combine with the testing it's it's I don't understand how you couldn't if you actually watched and paid attention you couldn't see how there was good athleticism on the field when actually paying attention and watching him so this is my problem with the combine in general but I don't I think I guess I still I'm still I'm still riding those four guys over Miles. So here's my thought process. I think that I think that Jacobs, Montgomery, and Rodney Anderson have a higher floor than Sanders does. Agreed? Yeah, I sure. Yeah. And I think that Harris has a higher floor than Sanders does. Y- sure. So there he is, RB5. Yeah. Okay. Your logic makes sense. I just think I I just love him. 
But at some point, you have to. I know you were maybe love them a little more than some people, and then some people hopped on the train a little late because of the testing. But you know, there we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. There are times where you know you need to swing for bigger upsides, and there definitely is a decent upside, especially if you're more into the numbers and metrics of things. Exactly. Um, and there, there is it. There's definitely like like I said, there is a. I think he needs a little bit of revision and to be honed in until he can really show what he was 100 percent capable of. So I do think there is, you know, a little bit more of a home run cut swinging on a guy like Miles Sanders. So, like, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm super upset with anybody for taking him if they want to reach up and grab him. Now, when you get into the whole mix of things and he's like pick 11 in the rookie draft, like I'll take him all day. Smash accept. Right. I'm fine with that. Like, I didn't think that that was going to be a real thing. Like, uh, the mock, way the in, way things are going, like, I, I would have thought, like, how he went in that mock draft with all of us, and he was the third running back taken, and maybe he's, like, 1-6 on, on a lot of drafts. That's where I kind of thought he and well, man, And that's what's going to happen. Like, right. That's everyone, probably everyone, what you're about to right. say. Yeah, and uh, most drafts that I'm in, everyone's get, reaching for these running, running backs. backs almost regardless because they know... And someone in the room. Right. In, in pre-combine, I was in a DLF pre-combine uh, rookie mock, and I took Sanders at like 202. And at that point, I'm all like over elated. Sanders. You're el- I'm I think all you got, over you, Sanders. I, I would be... Yeah, I'm fine with that. But there's I'm excited no, about there's that. There's no way he's going in the second but round But if Harris anymore. is there at 2-2, I want Harris. Exactly, exactly. For me. Like, you, but if, you, if, you if I'm saying might want if I'm at, saying Sanders over Harris at two hundred two, I'm taking Sanders all day. Yeah, because be, I think the floor, I think the ceiling is way higher for right. Sanders than is it for Harris. That's that's fine. I, but I would still like if those two are on the board, I'm still going with Harris over Sanders. Yeah. But I get where you're at. I Got see. I, I, I see your rationale. I'm just not. I'm just not there with you. Jay I can Wade, see it. I'm just not there. Shove it, Casey. You, you got anything else? I think I'm good. I. I I think I'm gonna miss out on Miles Sanders because I'm not gonna take him. I think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna go to 111. Yeah, I, I, don't so. I don't think. I don't think so either. And I initially, I initially was like, I'm gonna miss out on him too. But if, if for whatever reason he is does end up in that area, I'm, I'll, I'm down with the smash accept button on that. Like the only way he's there, the only way he's there at 111 is in super flex leagues. That's fair. I, I think tight so. ends. And like, I, I think because no, like they got how many tight ends? They got two tight ends. Well, no, they got one going at 12. So they got two tight ends inside the top 12. I mean, unless it's tight end premium and you really know your stuff, you're probably not taking Yeah, and, and I, I'll, I'll agree. With, like, I think, and especially people who maybe aren't quite as refined and getting really down and dirty with the dynasty stuff. If you're in a this non- guy tested well, yeah. so they're going to automatically jump up a little hot, even if, you know, yeah. wh- whether you've made the decision for yourself or not that you actually like Sanders. I think the fact that he tested much better than most of these athletes the people who aren't as into it and still play dynasty because they play dynasty are going to reach down and grab miles as well if you're in a dynasty league that's not with guys who are on twitter yes you're probably going to get miles sanders at 111 that's because, what i'm saying because he may not have that name well recogni- no that's not what i'm saying but yeah go ahead he's not he Sorry. doesn't have that name recognition where you're going to be reaching for guys that, but even josh jacobs in that league you're probably going to get a discount because He's going to go behind Harris because he wasn't the guy there. So um, the only thing I would like kind of I would disagree because I, I think that those kind of guys do a bunch of late cram before a test research and maybe they'll see the the testing of him and, and just be like, well, I, maybe I don't know that much about Miles Sanders, but he's got to be good because right. he tested here and maybe I'm reaching down and grabbing him. And Jacobs is number one on a lot of lists, so they're going to take yeah, him when yeah, they want to run mean, him back. That's true. I mean... I, I think, guess I'm, I think Sanders is going early, and you if you want him, you got to reach up and grab him. He's probably a top six draft pick. Yeah, and if that's the case, I'm out. I can't do it. You can't do that. Probably not. What's your I, what's, the problem? Is, right now, the problem is for me to really definitively say that right. I'm not. I haven't done my due diligence on these receivers, and if that's the case, I gotta love you know at least two of these receivers to be not in on Miles Sanders at, at six as how we just discussed him. Right. You know what I'm so saying? So in a mock draft last night, I, c- I took him at 105. You're out at that point? Most likely. As the RB2, you're if the, out? If there's four of those other running backs or five. Yeah, like so where's six, your point you're taking? You're probably taking him well, one, like, 108 at that I guess point? Like, like Harris, Anderson. Well, again, if, if Anderson's around, I am probably might try to trade in and move down a little bit yeah um but i want i want like i said i want those four guys in front i want jacobs montgomery harris and anderson to be gone before i want to take miles sanders um and but like i said in those five picks 
I, I don't know enough about the receivers to say that I love Harry or I love A.J. Brown or I love Metcalf Butler or, or Butler. Metcalf. Yeah. So I don't know enough to say that I definitely want those two guys. Over. I'm typically a running back all day, every day, especially in rookie drafts because I can usually get – at least some production out of my running back quickly. Yeah, and you can buy a you can buy a wide receiver for right. eighty cents on the dollar. Right. So I, I don't know that for a fact, but I think for the most part, I'm there's some good receivers in this draft, and I would probably gamble on one or two of them before I would go with Sanders if those four running backs were the first ones off the board per se. Right. All right. Well, in traditional married to the game fashion. We've been going way too long on Miles Sanders. Way, <laughs> way. Maybe way. we'll figure out a way to summarize that, that and put that out by itself. We'll see. Yeah. If you don't like it, listen to something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't make it long enough for the at least acknowledgement of the duration factor <laughs> here. So, <laughs> well, kindly we'll take a break. Yeah, let's definitely do that. Come re- back with some uh, Bryce. Re pop up. What do you, what do you call them? Brew dogs. Brew dogs. When I saw that, when I saw the message, I just saw like, I thought there was a comma between brew and dogs, and I was like, does he want to bring dogs over? I mean, I guess that's cool. Brew dogs, huh? Yeah, you gotta love a good brew dog. Never heard that term. Hmm. Well, we'll discuss it over break and come back <laughs> and see how we feel about it. All right, let's. We'll be back. <laughs> 